Hello and welcome to our memorial garden. I'll take you around starting from your left and tell you about some of the larger pieces that you can see in front of you. This frame contains items of memorial to Trooper Simon Clark. Simon was a young Kiwi from Rotorua who went out to Rhodesia in 1978. He was killed in action in the Wedza Tribal Trust Land on the 28th of August 1978. He was aged 20. Simon died in the arms of his stick leader, Trevor McElwain. Simon was a former pupil of Mount Albert Grammar in Auckland. This roll of honour was made by Trevor Jones. It formerly hung in the Sergeants and Warrant Officers Mess of the 4th Manicaland Battalion Rhodesia Regiment. It was removed to South Africa by Trevor around about 1980. Trevor subsequently donated it to the Rhodesian Services Association in the early 2000s. You will note the names of the three casualties recorded at the bottom of the Roll of Honour. Of interest would be Warrant Officer Clipston. Clippy Clipston's grandson, Braden Enor, is an All Black and Crusader rugby player. This Roll of Honour is from the 5th Battalion Rhodesia Regiment. It is made from Rhodesian black granite and weighs about 120 kilos. In 1980, officers of the unit laid the Roll of Honour up in the Mabel Rain Club in Harare. It subsequently came under risk from members of the club and it was removed by Arv Roth, former member of the Rhodesian SAS, to his home residence. He subsequently contacted the Rhodesian Services Association, offering it to us. We paid two women in Harare to crate and export it by truck to Durban, from whence it was t taken by ship to New Zealand. For a number of years, it stayed in the patio area of one of our members in Teronga, where it was open to the public. Once this memorial garden was established, it was brought in here. This is the full 4th Manicaland Battalion Rhodesia Regiment Roll of Honour Board. The late Lieutenant Colonel Peter Brown, OLM, whose mess kit uniform is on display behind you just over to the right, wrote, the life of the 4th Manicaland Battalion was ended in, on, in a very sombre ceremony on Thursday the 23rd of October 1980, during which the colours of the battalion were laid up in the St John's Anglican Church together with the Roll of Honour. This was a low-key ceremony arranged discreetly among remaining members. The laying up was organised from the drill hall over the phone and by word of mouth amongst those who could attend. We were not allowed to have a parade through town, which is what we, what we would prefer. The troops gathered outside the St. John's Anglican Church at about 1700 on the day, and they formed up and then filed in. The service was conducted by Father Knight, and the colors and Roll of Honor were handed over to him for safekeeping. If I remember correctly, we all went back to our various messes after the service to wet our whistles and exchange memories. As far as I can recall, no further musters of 4RR were recorded after that. I did attend the Zimbabwe independence ceremony held in Chipinga in my full military uniform, but feelings were running high and one had the dis distinct feeling of not being wanted around anymore. That was the end of what I knew of good old 4RR. Just a note here about colours. Traditionally, rifle regiments do not have regimental colours. However, in Rhodesia, this was a popular term for the regimental flag. Some time after the ceremony at St John's Church, the church was desecrated by Edgar Tikiri, one of Robert Mugabe's right-hand men. 
the flag and roll of honor apparently disappeared. In around 2011, a person visited the St. John's Church and engaged with an elderly African church worker. When asked about the board with names on and the flag, this man showed where he had hidden the roll of honor board following to Kerry's visit. He did not know anything about the flag. This man took extreme personal risk to hide this roll of honor and we must be forever grateful to him. The roll of honor was board was subsequently removed from Zimbabwe in a clandestine manner and shipped to New Zealand. It arrived in New Zealand in around 2012 where it was kept by Hugh and Diana Bomford in their house until 2018 when the Lion and Tusk Museum had been established and it was installed in the Memorial Garden as you see in front of you. On Thursday the 6th of July 2023 this audio visual display that you're watching was installed for the first time and put to use. This section of the audio reported that the unit flag could not be located. The very next day a package arrived at the, the museum. It had been posted from the UK three months prior. It contained a letter from Mrs Gwyn Marshall and a Rhodesia Regiment flag. Gwyn wrote, My husband, Colour Sergeant Pete Marshall, was with the Salu Scouts and posted to Pforarar in Mtali over the last few months of the war and during the period following. At the fall of Rhodesia, we left to settle in South Africa and Pete kept up his relationship with the CO of 4RR during his visits back to what had become Zimbabwe. During this time, Pete was given this flag for safekeeping. I'm sorry, I cannot re recall the name of the, of the commanding officer. We both knew what it meant to keep the flag safe and it has been in a trunk for the past 40 years. Pete did not feel it appropriate to leave it in South Africa and brought it to the UK. Pete died about five years ago and it is only during these past couple of years that I've been able to face sorting out his military collection. I am London born and I know how important fl military flags are. I didn't know what to do with the flag until I saw the Lion and Tusk Museum mentioned on Facebook. I'm now very glad that you have it in safekeeping. You can see the flag behind you above Peter Brown's uniform. The circumstances under which it has arrived here are curious to say the least. But now that we have the flag and the role of honour board and Peter Brown's uniform all in one place, safely where it can be all be seen by the general public and who now know the story behind how it got here. This is the 8th Battalion Rhodesia Regiment Roll of Honour. It found its way to the UK and in 2018 Martin Hudson offered it to the Lion and Tusk Museum. Association members Bev and Gary Mooney kindly offered to bring it back from the UK during their trip to watch the All Blacks tour. They met up with Martin and the Roll of Honour exceeded the size and weight that had been envisaged. Their first challenge was to get back onto the tube train together with this large unwieldy package. Somebody on the train helped them put it into a storage compartment and all went well. They got off the train back in London and needed a taxi to get back to their to hotel. The, all the taxis in the rank were little bubble taxis. Fortunately, a larger taxi drove up just as they were wondering what to do next. So that was another piece of luck for them. The next piece of luck for them was when they arrived back in New Zealand, the Auckland airport arrival lounge was full to expanding out onto the tarmac almost. 
They joined the back of the queue expecting a long wait. Not, not long after joining the queue, a customs officer tapped Gary on the shoulder and he said to Gary, I know what that is, come with me. Gary wasn't too sure about this and went with the customs officer. It turned out that the customs officer somehow knew that this was a roll of honour that was coming to New Zealand and he put it through the x-ray machine and gave Gary the, the, the pass to go. So luck has followed the people who have been responsible for bringing this Roll of Honour to the, to the Lion and Tusk Museum and we thank them for what they've done. These four panels here are clay on wood. They were made by Winston Hart, former member of the British South Africa Police, BSAP, who was attached to the Salute Scouts. Winston is a trained sculptor and over a long period of time he sculpted these panels which were subsequently used to make moulds from which bronze panels were made for the memorial of the British South Africa Police that is in the Arboretum in the United Kingdom. Winston kindly donated these panels to the Lion and Tusk Museum where you, where you can see them here now. This memorial bell has been made from a 25 pounder shell along with a number of brass Rhodesian badges. The original idea was presented by Jack Maddox, a Kiwi who went out to Rhodesia and served with the fire brigade there as well as being a reservist policeman with the British South Africa Police. Jack was kindly assisted in this project by Graham Skinner. We are grateful to all those involved. Thank you for visiting the Lion and Tusk Museum. We hope that this short video has helped you with understanding what these objects are in this memorial garden and how they came to be in New Zealand. These roles of honour are incredibly important to the history of Rhodesia and they are also very important to those who have friends and family recorded here. We are very grateful to all those who have facilitated their removal from places of danger and that where they are now able to be viewed by the general public and appreciated for what they are. We thank you and we trust that all those named here rest in peace.